But what he's, what exactly. he's essentially saying is that we're not, we're not even making arrests here be, because this is going on throughout the whole state, so we don't want to just do that. We want to take it. Well, why, did, why wasn't Operation Orange Bottle treated the same way? I mean, it's probably going on throughout the whole state. Right, Maybe we just need to send everything up to the state. Mm -hmm. if it's going to happen someplace else in the state, and we're not the only place. I think the point is is that there, there could be... There could be some arrests. There should be some arrests made right now. If, if they're going to arrest all these people for distributing medicine, um, then maybe, maybe when you, you actually have a felony going on right in front of you, maybe those people should get arrested too. Well, we're back and we're happy. We are George Myers. How do? <laughs> Jim Spottick. Hello. And Dr. Jorgen. Howdy. Monday morning. Oh, man. I hope you guys had a great Halloween. Oh, yeah. Very good. I didn't I didn't notice it until I uh, came over to your house here, and there's all these kids wandering around dressed up like goblins and stuff. It was <laughs> kind of nice. Well, speaking of horrible things, scary things, frightening developments, we got, uh, we got a, a running total on this Andy Widener case. A yeah. financial, t well, this isn't a total, it's a total so far. And it comes up to $195,789.95 to keep a bunch of PowerPoint slides Emails out that of she's her already hand, seen. Out of her hands, yeah. <laughs> the whole committee's seen, the whole executive council's yeah. seen. She can't, she can't see them. She just wanted to confirm what it was that they were using against her. No, you can't... Uh, you can't, can't uh, see, see that. One hundred ninety-five thousand dollars to stop her from seeing those emails. This is what the city spent. This is your yeah, tax this, dollars this going is, to this. I and that, well, that doesn't count uh, what her legal expenses yeah, have been. Of course, and really, yeah. I don't know what that is. The city's going to have to get nicked for that too. They're going to have to I reimburse think, her for, for I that. I think that's where it's going to go. Yeah, they, I agree. they certainly should. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they covered John Dickert in that lawsuit against him. Remember the libel suit against him because he badmouthed somebody on the radio? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, oh, we have to cover that. Mayor 24 7, remember that? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, so, yeah. Uh, any, any expenses that uh, Sandy Widener incurred should also be paid. And this thing isn't over yet. This is. No. And remember, it, it, it's the council and your mayor that are, that are pushing this type of stuff. The council could have stopped this a long time ago, too. Yeah, they yeah, could have. Absolutely. They should actually look into this and say, why Why did we spend $200,000? They're worried about certain things, but apparently this isn't one of them, you know? Yeah. So. Well, and speaking of money, I mean, we got a, we got another uh, another bit of money here, a financial settlement, and it was, this is for the gentleman whose dog was killed by the police during a confrontation over, was it on... Victory Avenue or somewhere over there, Republic, yeah, one of those. Yeah. That settlement. That was Angel. Yeah. That was Angel dog. Angel shooting. dog. Yep. Nice little dog. I, I've seen the tape, but yeah, I, no, I, I don't, I, I don't ever want to see it again. Yeah. I, I really don't. It was just ugly. The settlement amount, $270,000 will be paid. $270,000 because somebody got out of control and shot somebody's dog, and the taxpayer's on the hook for it. And this doesn't even this doesn't uh, include legal expenses. This is not lawyers' fees. Yeah, I don't know exactly, but that's two seventy. That's definitely out of their pocket. So, is there more money involved? I don't know, but there's at least two seventy. That's an awful lot of money for 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 making bad judgment calls. Yeah, uh, you know. I mean, yeah. between the two of them, we're looking at uh, we're, we're we're closing in on a half a million dollars. Yeah, it'll be a half a million between those two. Just yeah. those two, and there's more out there. So, you know, you, what's happened here is. Uh, if the city ran right, if your uh, uh, elected officials did the right thing, you would eliminate these lawsuits. And instead of being honest uh, and, and transparent, uh, they decide to cover things up, and this is the results of it. And these aldermen apparently are blind to it. They think the money grows on trees. It actually comes from taxpayers who struggle, many of them. Well, in a sense, it does grow on trees. You know, paper money, I think they're using... Well, wait, they, no, they, wait, 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 wait. You're right, it does not grow on trees because they use cotton fiber. All right, well, cotton fiber. Maybe yeah. help someday, Doc. Well, that would be a good idea, really. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I kind of want to bring something up. Now, I... Uh, Have you got an axe to grind? This uh, a little bit. Yes, I do. I got I got to admit it. Have I'm you been little, embittered? <laughs> I haven't been embittered <laughs> the first time, but I... Uh, I, I went to uh, film the uh, Sheriff Schmeling's uh, uh, press conference that was held uh, at the uh, 
police substation in Ives Grove uh, at the uh, county building. They held it in a substation, which uh, to me was a setup already because they're going to limit the people coming in. But they did make a request for media to come out there. Well, it was an invitation. Absolutely. Sent out, right? Now, yeah. we've been on air since uh, uh, 2016. So we have racked 250 episodes. I mean, we definitely focus in on Racine. This is in Racine. It's a natural for, for this show to be out there to look at look at. Uh, you know, to get there and get a, get a, actually ask some questions too, because it was on election integrity was their focus, and they had and you probably saw it, and uh, they talked about the uh, uh, Ridgewood Health Center having votes there that were uh, people that either were uh, incapacitated or died, and they were voting, and they found about eight different instances. Now I'm not going to get into they, had, they actually did find some instances where dead people voted. Yeah, apparently they. Somehow got it's Halloween, Doc. Anything can happen. <laughs> but anyway, so anyway, but but you know, I don't want to get into that too much. I want to get into the fact that how is the county handling uh, the policy of press? So let me just do a little explanation here, and I and I, I uh, I'm just going to go and I want to show a little video here of, and then I want to come back and explain a little bit of how what went on because we did video some of that that you know not having access to it and it wasn't just a bunch of uh, uh, you know crazed people that wanted to get in and whipped out their cell phones there was legitimate media there a lot of independents who obviously wanted to come in because this election is a big deal and there's a lot of people that that, that uh, you know are interested in it and wanted to get there well now, a couple of them that you mentioned that you saw there were representative state representatives yes, assembly exactly members. So let me show this little video here, and we're gonna just kind of we'll just kind of go through it here exactly what happened. Something that uh, the news media, the mainstream news media, the legitimate news. The, I like to, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's we will stop there. <laughs> let me uh, play this. Okay, uh, I I just want to point these two these two. Uh, now this is the. I guess you call it the vestibule into the substation at the police department or the sheriff's department. So there's one door they allowed, they wouldn't let these two fellas in. Now, one of them is uh, Shea Sortwell. Now, he's from Two Rivers. He came down uh, to, to, to this conference. Now, I want to go back on Shea because he was the one, the original one that did the open records request in Green Bay. He's the one where the clerk came to him and said, do an open records request. So this guy was really the guy that really kicked off the whole CTCL money that said, where is this money? Uh, Spitzer Rubenstein, all that stuff popped up in Green Bay and we said, hey, it's going to come to Racine at some point. He was not allowed in. Now we're going to show a little bit of him, you know, getting questioned. Who are you? And the other one is uh, Chuck uh, uh, Wick Wick Wickers. Wickers, and he's from Muskego. He's another one that uh, they wouldn't let into the press conference. Now these are representatives. Now my thoughts were: now we're we're already told, hey, hey we we got to check you out. Uh, was already told that we're we're being examined, I guess. And uh, these guys were told. Uh, uh, you're not in. But I'll tell you what, if Robin Voss walked in, they'd have escorted him right in. Yeah, I think that's a, yeah. that almost a certainty. And these guys are on the same level as Robin Voss, Absolutely. actually. They're, they're, they're all assemblymen. Um, Robin Voss is Speaker of the House, Assembly, but still, on, when it comes to voting and that type of stuff, you know, it, and these guys came a long ways, and they were very intru instrumental in getting this whole thing started and very integral to the process. They should certainly be allowed to go in there and ask some questions. <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> now, just just to preference this a little bit, so I'm out there, and the the deputy, uh, I said, you know, you, you need press credentials, okay? So, you know, I give him my press credentials. I got everything. I even give him a card that we use here, and uh, he looks at it. Okay, uh, I'll take your name. He takes my name down. I think he took my phone number or something. He goes back in, comes back out, and says, uh, just you know go to the side so Adam Rogan from the Journal Times is there can I get your press credentials he's like patting his pants and then all of a sudden he says uh, I think I threw it through the wash and I think they got uh, uh, destroyed in the wash and I'm like and I said to the deputy I said hey, he's from the Journal Times I said you know I know him he's from the Journal Times and uh, oh, okay so he walks in 
Channel 58. He takes your word for it. Takes my word that. But you're not good enough. To I'm not good her. enough to go in. <laughs> so, Channel 58's there. He's patting his pants, and you know they're looking in their shirts. Well, I don't think I've never had to get asked before. And, and I'm looking at him like the deputy. I'm like, uh, I said, well, who gets in and who doesn't get in? He goes, o only the mainstream uh, major uh, media. Major media. Yeah. I'm like, uh, well, what what exactly is that? And then of course he won't answer. And I'll show it a little video here. And uh, so 58 gets in. So this little dog and pony show was going back and forth. Who are you? Who aren't you? One of them that gets in is a guy named uh, Jefferson Davis, and he, he's a, a contributor to the Gateway Pundit, which is a right-wing uh, blog spot, and he comes in. They let him in. I'm thinking, he says to me, maybe I'll get you in. I'm like, what, what is that? <laughs> yeah, you in, yeah. So he goes in. Now, he does ask a question that would have been asked by probably me or anybody else here, and then, of course, there were some people from high government there. There were some other uh, uh, persons online that ran some fairly extensive YouTubes and, and different uh, websites, and they were not allowed in. So it was really just this media they wanted to control who goes into this because there was one narrative to be told, and that's all. And we're not going to spread it out to the city of Racine or Green Bay or any of this stuff. It's going to be Ridgewood Healthcare has uh, violated uh, uh, these uh, nursing home facilities and the WEC gave them permission to violate, and that's what the story is. And we're not going to talk about anything else. So anyway, let me just play this. We'll go back, and what you're going to see now is the deputy uh, asking these state representatives for their ID. Now before the press conference starts, officer. I'm an also state representative. Sir, did you take an oath to the Constitution? Sir. Thank you. Excuse me. Thank you. Did you take an oath to the Constitution? Kick you out? Yeah, so on that press release, I did say, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they, they went ahead and turned into a political. The spectrum lady can't take it. It's not a political. None of us are going to make it. Yeah, political. she has a I'm a political person. So that's, that's the end of that story. I just want to stop it here. Now, the guy there, uh, the black guy there, is the. Uh, uh, the chair for the Racine County. That, that's. Uh, uh, Frazier. So he got in. Party? Frazier got in. Uh, oh, he did. He got in, but they kicked him out then. They said, uh, we don't want this to be political. Uh. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> so he's, he's explaining to, I don't know, somebody there that, well, they, he said, I got kicked out because they didn't want this to be political, so they removed me. So again, we're going into a press conference. You've got somebody from the Republican Party that's the chair wants to go in. You have representatives from the state of Wisconsin that wants to go in, but oh, they have to be kicked out because I can tell you why. Because they're not they're because they're gonna ask some questions that don't want to be that, that they don't want to hear. They want this press conference to be exactly what they want it to be said. And this isn't because I agree or disagree with it. The fact is they were controlling that media and that's exactly what was happening. Uh, at this press conference. So well, I'll, I'll, just how many people did they allow in? Did you get like a rough count? I don't know. Like 6, uh, 8, 12, whatever? Uh, yeah, I'm going to say they had, uh, I know, a 58, 4, 12, 6, maybe a half, maybe maybe there was a half a dozen that got in. But, you know, well, a couple of them slipped in that probably yeah. the one was gateway abundant. But, uh, yeah, they were real selective. Matter of fact, Spectrum 1, uh, she had come and uh, they weren't letting her in. And then she said, you know, who, is, how, who are you? I don't know if we want you in. And I mean, this is the conversations that were going on. And then she finally has to call her boss and says, I'm here. They won't let me in. So I think Spectrum One called the sheriff's office and said, you know, we got a real problem. You're not, yeah, well, you're going to get your cable cut off. <laughs> yeah, if you don't let her in. So she gets in. So he walks by and I said, hey, what about, uh, what about me coming in? They take my name. You know, they got everything. I'm like... Are you kidding me? And there was, again, about probably a good half a dozen, I mean, legitimate press that were outside that weren't allowed in. So we'll, I'll just continue on here a little bit, and we'll finish up. And I'm telling you, officer, this is an outrage. We are press. We're invited in as a press. If you want to stand there and look stoic, that's fine. But you know what? This is bullshit. Uh, that's Harry Waite. Hot government. <laughs>
president of hot government. But I'm going to tell you, guy. He's a, yeah. <laughs> but that's exactly what how everybody felt there. Yeah. Exactly like that. So, you know, this, this press conference, uh, everybody either had to listen to it on their phone or somehow to pick it up. So you had no, and then, so I don't know if it was, somebody asked, what if we have some questions? The officer, the deputy says, well, give them to me. I'll run them in. And have them answer, then give you the answer. I mean, it was a joke. And I, I you joke. know, I don't understand how how narrow and and cloistered uh, Schmeling is, the sheriff, to think that when he's not letting all these TV channels in, he's not bringing politics into it. I mean, the, the media has been so politically political recently. How how can you? What, what, if anything, the. the Local media, Jim, like you and, and um, County I and, and Harry, would be less political and more concerned about facts, facts and, and what's right exactly. and what's wrong than, than, the, than the media, and particularly television, who's basically putting on a show. Yeah. <clears throat> sure, they get a minute, two minutes. But you know what they wanted to say is we got this big investigation and it's going to go national. We need to get it out there. In this little county, we discovered that ballots were... Uh, well, that, that's what they wanted to talk about. Yeah. They wanted to talk about a, a few individuals that were questionably allowed to vote or, or voted if they were maybe incompetent and shouldn't have voted, but they hadn't been ruled that way. But it, basically, just a lot of noise. Exactly. They didn't want to really cover the story that... In, that that started this whole thing. Right. I mean, you had that you, being all that money that came from Zuckerberg. So why didn't they let Sortwell in? Because Sortwell was the guy that's that, that did the email request in in Green Bay. Yeah. yeah. And he was obviously going to ask some questions like, "Hey, what about what about uh, this millions of dollars that were dropped in the Wisconsin? Have you looked at any of that?" They had focused in on this on this uh, uh, investigation. Well, we're going to get into that a little deeper too. But I, I just want to explain a little bit about this happened prior to <laughs> this whole media uh, conference. Total. So here's here's talking Racine's position anyway. We haven't really discussed it totally. Uh oh, we're on board for this now, George. <laughs> Hold on, boys. Oh boy. <laughs> I want to do so. I want I want that information. I want you know when they that little pad that they wrote on. I want that. I want that body cam of that deputy. I want all of that. I want this stuff because. When you take the press out of anything, you're a, you're you're that that First Amendment. If I'm talking about a constitutional sheriff and you violate the First Amendment, plus to me it's the Fourteenth Amendment. I got treated differently than than anyone else. I had credentials. I couldn't get in. But the guy patting his pants saying uh, I, I don't have anything. Well, apparently you're okay. You're well. You vouched for him, so he was I okay. I vouched for him. Yeah. <laughs> It's bogus. I mean, you can see I'm a little bit ticked off about it, and I should be. And, yeah. I, and I should also, every media organization that was there should be ticked off at that whole press conference. Absolute, total cluster. Whatever. Well, yeah, and, and, and here's the other thing. There, there, there was a room very close to that room that they could have moved to. I mean, it's got lots yeah, that of was his excuse. After he got an email, he came back. Well, well we you had could have held it in the parking lot for crying out loud. How many Listen. how many press conferences have you seen where the sheriff is outside of a building oh, yeah. addressing people in a parking lot? He could have done it in a garage. I mean, a six foot distancing, and we had to be this and that. Yeah. Uh, you're you're making this big deal about this press that's, conference. Then you hold true. it in a small room yeah. so you can just just enough people in there, just who we want in there, just enough to send this message out on the airwaves the way we want to. Um, that's, that's, I'm that's surprised, I'm yes, Schmeling, he sh should have a little more courage than that. He shouldn't be so afraid of the public. I mean, he's, he's the sheriff. He's elected by the public. His boss is the public. Yeah. You know, this is a major screw no, no reason for him to be that. There needs that to I be see. policy. What's the policy? I want to know what their policy was for this, too. And I'm not alone. There was a number of, of media out there that's just... I think, I think that's true. And, and, and when they're making that policy, they better start looking very closely at local, what we call local media, guys like Jim uh, you know, and, and, and Harry. Because, you know, with social media coming up, you know, with, uh, with all the stuff that goes over the Internet and stuff like that, uh, the, the, the major TV sh shows and the, and the printed media, the big newspapers... Have got some competition, just, Major just, from, competition, from, local pe just yeah. from local people. So th they need to be considered on a much different perspective than maybe they were considered 20 years ago. 
So, uh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I agree with you, Jim. There needs to, that policy needs to come out, and it's time that, it's time that th th these public officials started recognizing that uh, they're being the, crushed the, the, the out there, George. Media. I don't think yeah. they realize it. I mean, you know, these guys are old school. They think that Channel Four and Six and Twelve, they're getting crushed. You're getting crushed on the internet. I, I, this, they're going to get crushed on this. I can tell you right now. And uh, you're going to find this because if, if, there if, were if, guys if, out there doing live stream. Now they were ticked off and they're live streaming a lot of this. Mm -hmm. so Jim, if, if, if it was, if the mass media was really all encompassing as they used to be, there wouldn't be an investigation of this vote. No. Yeah, that, 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 those those two those two uh, lawmakers there would not even have considered it because who's going to cover it? You can see what the media does every every time you, you read something in the media. Oh, it's all a big scam, you know. The you know any challenge. So uh, it, it's it's it, it is important, and the reason there's this continuous upswelling is because of the local media, the the, the, the people talking with each other, just just communicating with each other better. So it's it's time it's time they started recognizing right. people like you and or, saying, hey, you know, know, things like what we do. Guys. Yeah. We broke a lot of stories in receipt. Matter of fact, we broke them all. I, I mean, you know, Adam Rogan at the Cheryl Times, a nice guy, but they're not going to break anything. Hell, they're going to go along with it, just like they're going to go along no, with it. No, this. you hand fed him, spoon fed oh, him yeah. information. I spooned the Journal Times. Row. Oh, my God. You I mean, know. just as one example. Exactly. Well, I mean, look look what Dennis Monte did with, yeah. with the arena, with, right. with the, yeah. some lawn signs, for God's sake, you know. Right. And, and, and if, 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 if we just been read, all been reading the Journal Times and listening to WRJN when that was going on. We, we have, have an, an arena. We have an arena down there. Yeah. <laughs> and there'd be nobody attending it. <laughs> all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on now. Now we're going to go to the press <laughs> conference, which we, I, I was listening on. It depended on who had the phone that you could hear, and it depended on how fast your speed was on your phone because you'd hear it and it would be delayed somewhere else. And it was all this mumbo jumbo of trying to listen to it. Yeah, it sounds exciting. Oh, it was an exciting day. I mean, there was so much temper flying. And actually, it was, and I'm thinking to myself, this is actually better than the conference because I can get the conference. But this out here is actually, actually more action. <laughs> Here's where the action is. <laughs> so maybe it was for the best, I guess. Anyway, so let me play this. I just want to kind of go through this, and we're going to go into the to the press conference. Oh, a big bust of people abusing prescription drugs. Fifty people have been arrested. If Michelle Fiore is live from the Racine County with more on Operation Orange Bottle. Michelle. Well, Carol and George, this is the list that we got from the sheriff today. All of these people arrested in Operation Orange Bottle, and many of them now facing felony drug charges. Sheriff Schmeling was quick to point out the dealers are from all walks of life. Parents, grandparents, and young people, all allegedly selling addictive medications that are destroying families. If your loved one, if your friend or family member was addicted to these opiate medications, you would want that person responsible for these deadly poisons to be arrested and arrested swiftly. These are uh, madams, if you will, uh, who are in charge of a home that is used for the purpose of sale uh, of sex. That alleged prostitution happening on this quiet block of Vine Street inside this home. Racine County Sheriff deputies took 28-year-old Adina Sparks and 27-year-old Eugenia Nance into custody on Sunday. The sheriff says they are facing felony and misdemeanor charges for allegedly luring customers online through the website. Back the apartment officers found dozens of different types of pills, THC vape cartridges, scales, packaging materials, drug paraphernalia, and nearly 800 in cash. The boy arrested on a number of recommended charges of drug delivery and possession, as well as maintaining a drug place. Officials say his mother wasn't there at the time, but also facing charges of keeping a drug place and drug paraphernalia possession. The Racine County Sheriff's Office says charges have been referred to the district attorney's office for both the 15-year-old and his mother. Attention. Reporting. Okay, so the Sheriff's Department finds illegal activity, mm -hmm. charges them. Yeah. They go to the district attorney and they are arrested. Am I missing something here? No, that's the way it's supposed to go. Yeah, that's, that's generally the standard <clears throat> procedure. Yeah. Somebody. Everything's only up and up there, Joe. Yeah, good. Yeah. All right. Why'd you bring that up? This is different now. <laughs> there's some difference here. Yeah. Let's play a little bit of this, and we'll kind of go through this now. This is just, there's, I don't know, it's an hour maybe long or 45 minutes long. I just picked up some pieces, but it, it explains a little bit about this investigation. Now, into I, I'd just like to ask one question about the orange bottle. Yeah, you know, it, it sounds to me like it's some kind of simple medica medication. 
Well, it's prescription medication. Yeah. yeah, well, what was he talking about, these dangerous poisons? Well, he's talking about opiates. Opiates, you know. Oh, they, oh, they were yeah, also... Oxycontin, they, whatever. Oh, so, that, well, that's that's grandma sells the Oxycontin. Of what so so sold, Operation yeah. Orange Bottle was more than just medical stuff. It was also included opiates and stuff? Yeah, well, well opiates are medical. Yeah. Okay, but what, where, where are these poisons he's talking about? Well, he's talking about the opiates. Yeah, you know. Okay, George, I get a prescription. Well, that's, uh, that's uh, you, you've got a prescription. You're going to be taking a poison? Well, you're going to sell it to somebody else who wants yeah. to get high. Yeah. yeah. All right, but I'm just saying, yeah. uh, it, 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 let, I just want to keep it in perspective. Right. I, mean, uh, just, well, I like the 15-year-old boy who, you know, he do this bust on him, and, he, and he's got a drug house. Well, they, his mom's not home, but we're going to go charge his mother later, you know, because he's holding a drug house. Okay, we're yeah. going to arrest her, and I'm sure he did. Right, but but we're not we're not talking about heroin laced with arsenic or something no. like that. This is this is medic, medical stuff in an orange bottle. Right. That's called Operation Orange right. Bottle. Yeah. So these are relatively low level type of opi of, of uh, pharmaceuticals type of thing. Or, or, yeah, or, um, yeah. Not unless if your loved one um, took one and they didn't like. Yeah, of drugs. Yeah. I mean, as far as a drug goes, they're, but they're, fifty. 50 arrests. I know. So I know. Go arrest grandma who's selling her drugs or the kids by stealing them. I don't know. The fact she's is. Selling her medications. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Selling yeah. medications. So then they would go in. It goes into a little bit more. but uh, I just want to get the proper level of, right. of, the, of the crime here in this orange Operation Orange Bottle. Very good. Clear violation but, of state law. Um, and I want to see that repaired. I want to see the people who violated held accountable. And it doesn't happen again. Are you asking for the Wisconsin Election Commission? Are you recommending charges on any individual members for the commission? Well, now he's talking about something else. Is, is well, yeah, this, this is now this is the press conference. Yeah, and yeah. He's now saying, back to the press and conference. Somebody yeah. says, "I want. I've got clear violations. I've got." Uh, and somebody asked, and it was a guy from the Gateway Planet, the guy that actually snuck in, yeah. is asking the questions, well, are you going to charge anyone at the WC, at the Wisconsin Election Commission, who allowed this activity to happen, this felony charges? Well, and, that, and that's on the, on, the, on the voting thing. Yeah, yeah, on the voting. Yeah. So we're over to the vote. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. So well, yeah, yeah, he, he must have had a conversation <laughs> with the DA about it, right? Well, let's go on. Now he's he's being asked, are you going to yeah, make yeah, any yeah, charges? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I had the 15 year old kid, orange bottle, the prostitute. Well, well, my job in law enforcement, our job in any investigation, is to find the facts, collect those facts, document those facts, present them to our district attorney for her review and ultimate charging decision. Really think about it. We have a Wisconsin Elections Commission who failed to follow the law. Everything else that happened at is sort of the, the unfortunate result. We need to start at the top where this occurred. We need to stop it, start at the top where this occurred. Okay, so what are you going to do? I didn't hear him say anything about that. Well, let's go on. Let's go on a little further. <laughs> we need to start at the top where this occurred. That's, so, that's why I asked. Exactly, but that, that is not my decision, sir. It's not my decision. Clarify. So, where are we? Did you, I think I heard you say you have not officially referred the cases to the district attorney's Right. We we've had conversations, extensive conversations with uh, the district attorney and uh, one of her talented assistant DAs. Um, we haven't officially sent any paperwork over. Uh, I, I just think this case is so detailed, so complex, and um, quite honestly, this is a state level case. This case is more adequately uh, investigated at the state level. When you have crimes occurring throughout the state of Wisconsin, all 72 counties, yes, we have our little slice of the pie here, and, and maybe we can deal with it. But why this wouldn't be dealt with at the state level, be it the Attorney General's office, be it the Division of Criminal Investigation, is beyond me. Uh, and, and, and I understand that people above my pay grade ultimately make those decisions. But uh, I think we're doing uh, a lot of great work here, a lot of hard work here, but somebody else should start uh, doing some of the heavy lifting also. You really got to focus on, and we've said this a couple times, the law was broken with the advice of the WEC to not follow the law. That is the problem. We can find more uh, unfortunate victims, if you will, or, or, or results of that, but that's kind of why we can stop here and take a pause, because according to the law that the legislature writes, which is called election fraud, not following the law is just that. And we have proved through the, their letters, through their own words, that they advise people, clerks throughout the state of Wisconsin, once again, to not follow the law. That's the violation. So are you going to refer the case or send anything to the DA and when? 
We've been in conversations. Uh, we will continue to have conversations. Uh, I think the sheriff has called for what is much more appropriate, and that being a statewide investigation. Right, I wonder, if, if they find uh, out that some kid is uh, selling pot down on the corner, do they refer it to the DA for instructions, or do they go and arrest the kid? Doc, I, you know, it just sounds like they, they have to, they can't do anything. They can only investigate. It's too complicated, huh? It's a complicated case. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, I look at this Operation Orange Bottle, you know, they're making arrests like crazy. And are, is that because this is the only place in the state where something like that's going on? See, right. yeah, what, what, he's, what exactly. he's essentially saying is that we're not, we're not even making arrests here be, because this is going on throughout the whole state, so we don't want to just do that. We want to take it. Well, why, why wasn't Operation Orange Bottle treated the same way? I mean, it's probably going on throughout the whole state. Right, Maybe people. we just need to send everything up to the state. Mm -hmm. if it can happen someplace else in the state, and we're not the only place. I think the point is is that there, there, could, there could be some arrests. There should be some arrests made right now. If, if they're going to arrest all these people for distributing medicine, um, then maybe... Maybe when you, you actually have a felony going on right in front of you, maybe those people should get arrested too. Gee, George, what, what a concept. Huh. Yeah. What a concept. Fresh. It's a fresh, fresh idea. idea. You know, <laughs> again, we go back to... It's my, uh, it's my years and years of experience on yeah. this planet. My, my. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, you know, the old BS meter just kept going up and up and up. Like, wait a second here. You're telling me that I've, been, I've watched so many different cases where they'll go down to, if I remember right, Southern Illinois and grab somebody. They send officers down there to grab somebody they wanted to get here, and they chase all the way back here to try to, to get To use that person as a witness. To, as a witness. Yeah. And then, yeah, exactly. It's, so you can't find uh, Megan Wolf or somebody on the commission and just arrest them. They go, they drop bail, and then they go out, and then a judge decides if this was a violation or not. And then they're going to go to who? Who are they going to go to? The DA here? Yeah, yeah. They've had a serious conversation with her and one of her very competent assistants. Just like they did for uh, Machinery Row. Right. Yeah, they, they right. had a very lengthy uh, conversation yeah. with the district attorney, and she was unable to find anything illegal. Right. So you had, and you know, and you know, I think the email uh, we got an email from. I wonder if she's going to find anything illegal here. Well, let's find out what she's going to do with with the machinery row, because this is one where she was asked about machinery row, and I think well, she doesn't even at least she got asked about machinery row. There were conversations. This is one. When are we going to do something with machinery row? Come on, dear. When I can prove a crime. Uh, you, I can help you. you. I can help you, you prove that. that. We're not going to talk to you with that. It's not me you got to prove it to. I got to find a detective who can find a crime. I'll, I'll help you. Okay. Thank you. Got to find a, a detective, detective who can find a crime. Well, wait a sec. We, they did find a crime. Didn't they just find a crime? Did I just hear him say I got a felony? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're talking about, yeah. yeah and yeah, we had discussions, that. but I got to find a detective to find a crime. So in Machinery Roll, they couldn't find the crime. They got, well, they got to find a detective to deal with a crime. Now, in the, this election in the case. In orange bottle, they've, they've already got. They've, they've already got, got the detective. Yeah, right. They got to find the DA? They got to find the DA. So, <laughs> you know, it's like. <laughs> it's like whack-a-mole. This is a whack-a-mole. I like that. <laughs> okay, I can't Pretty take crazy. it anymore. George, get yeah, it. let's let's. Yeah, George has got a. Uh, George looks at the news. You want to do it or? You want, you want to look at, Yeah, yeah. Just, we, we're we, running long today, so we're all gonna, right, all know. right. The the um, it just you know sometimes some things hit me, and this one one of them was Mayor Mason urges passage. Now that the passage is of the expanded child care infrastructure, which is a bit silly. You know, child care is not part of infrastructure. That, they've joined the highways and the bridges uh, when it comes to infrastructure, the babysitters now. But what was, what was, what was so good was he, 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 he really liked the Build Back Better agenda. Uh, he said if that were adopted in Congress, it would be transformational. 
I want to, <laughs> that was that word when again. I saw that yeah. word again, I think of Jim Palinek of Middletown. And, you know, <laughs> I, you know, it's just, it's just transformational. Is just such a wonderful world word. I mean, it's it. it I was I was just amazed with that, and I'm glad to hear that. The, well, sort of glad to hear that the mayor is really up on the up on the vocabulary yeah. For, yeah. For, for, yeah. for for reform stuff. Um, the the other one the other one was again. It's just one of those things. Uh, thousands to get high-speed internet. That that's very nice. Uh, all these small towns are going to be getting high-speed internet, and it's thanks to the grant-funded, to state grants funded by the federal government. Thanks to state grants funded by the federal government. Now, isn't that wonderful? You know, our state government is just so nice. But when it comes to investigating elections, it's taxpayers' money being used on it. You know. I mean, it, 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 it just just the the shift in where this money comes from. When one point is taxpayer, it's all taxpayers. Let's face that. But sometimes it's referred to as uh, taxpayers, and other times it's state grants funded by the federal government. You know, it, it's just it's just, it's just it's a wonderful just, uh, paper that they yeah, pass yeah, around. I know, it, it, it. Hey, though, that, though, that's my little Your note, little, notes about the news little today. Little yeah. for the week. Yeah. <laughs> It's well, a, come back next week. We're going to have a transformational. Yeah, and let's do one of those ourselves. Yes, well, uh, we should get into just that a big, bold blockbuster project next week, and you got to be here for it. We're going to be here waiting for you. Show up. <laughs>